Chapter 1 of the BCSC series in Glaucoma. Introduction to Glaucoma. The definition uh, in the BCSC series for glaucoma is a group of diseases that have in common a characteristic optic neuropathy with associated visual field loss for which elevated IOP is one of the primary risk factors. <clears throat> the normal range of IOP goes between 10 and 22 millimeters of mercury. This is based on a mean pressure of 16 millimeters of mercury with a standard deviation of 3 millimeters of mercury in the normal population. Therefore, anything outside two standard deviations is considered abnormal. The factors that determine the level of IOP include the rate of aqueous production, the resistance to aqueous outflow or the facility of outflow, and the level of episcleral venous pressure. The interrelationship of these variables is uh, seen clearly in the Goldman equation shown here, where IOP equals production divided by the facility of outflow plus the episcleral venous pressure. It's important to note that the most common cause of elevated eye pressure is decreased uh, outflow or increased resistance to outflow. The risk factors for glaucoma include age, race, family history, and level of IOP. There are many as yet undetermined risk factors for glaucoma that still exist. Glaucoma can typically be classified uh, into open or closed angle uh, categories. This is the most important clinical uh, classification to make, and it's important because there are different uh, therapeutic strategies that you use initially uh, for these two subcategories. Glaucomas can also be classified as either primary or secondary, primary being no obvious cause, and secondary where the glaucoma is obviously related or due to uh, other pathology that coexists. This differentiation may become less important as the underlying mechanisms for all glaucomas become more uh, clearly known. Uh, there are different classification systems for glaucoma as well. Glaucoma can be uh, classified based on the initial event. Uh, in this type of system, the open angle glaucomas can be subcategorized as capital POAG, capital NTG, a normal tension glaucoma capital JOAG or juvenile open angle glaucoma, glaucoma suspect and secondary open angle glaucoma. Capital POAG briefly would be uh, defined as those individuals with elevated eye pressure uh, and clinical signs of uh, an glaucomatous optic neuropathy but without any obvious secondary uh, pathology that would cause the problem. Normal tension glaucoma are those individuals who have normal eye pressure levels, therefore under 22. Uh, but have obvious glaucomatous uh, optic neuropathy. Uh, JOAG uh, are those individuals that look just like uh, primary open angle glaucoma patients. However, their age is typically between the ages of 3 and uh, 40 years of age, uh, 3 being the underlying limits for congenital glaucoma, and over 40 is when capital uh, POAG or primary open angle glaucoma would be defined. Glaucoma suspects are those individuals that have some characteristics that look suspicious for glaucoma, but don't meet the full criteria uh, for the diagnosis. Historically, in order to diagnose glaucoma, you needed to have two of three abnormalities in either the pressure, the optic nerve, or the visual field. That still uh, exists today, where you have to have two of three of those categories, or you could also uh, be classified as a glaucoma if you could show definitive optic nerve head uh, progression uh, over time, even before any field loss uh, and without elevated pressures. Secondary open angle glaucoma um, would be those individuals with uh, open angles but glaucoma due to a, uh, another problem. A common example of this would be aphagic glaucomas. Uh, just to go back to glaucoma suspects for a little bit, typically we can classify glaucoma suspects based on things like ocular hypertension alone. You can also be a glaucoma suspect because of a positive family history or some of the other risk factors, positive family history and race and age, for example. Uh, and sometimes you can be defined as a glaucoma suspect because you have a suspicious appearing optic nerve, but you don't meet any of the other criteria yet for the disease. So there are many ways to be classified as a glaucoma suspect. Glaucomas uh, 
for angle closures can also be based on the clinical event. Here we see a little breakdown of those. It could be primary angle closure glaucoma with pupillary block. That's the most common type of glaucoma uh, of primary angle closure glaucoma that I'll see in the clinic. There can be acute angle closure glaucoma, intermittent angle closure glaucoma, secondary angle, glau angle closure glaucoma with and without pupillary block, and plateau iris syndrome. Pupillary block is where there's a, a blockage of the aqueous flow through the pupil, so it's getting trapped in the posterior chamber, causing uh, iris bombay, which closes off the meshwork. Uh, this can happen chronically. If the pressure elevation is sudden, it can result in acute angle closure glaucoma. Intermittent angle glaucoma, angle closure glaucoma, is where there can be occasional episodes of elevated IOP, again, most commonly with uh, pupillary block causing uh, damage over time from these intermittent episodes. Patients typically will complain of occasional headaches and brow pain, possibly with uh, blurred vision. And you may see PAS on uh, exam the angle. Secondary angle glaucoma angle closure glaucomas with and without pupillary block uh, are also commonly seen. Secondary uh, angle closure with pupillary block uh, could be seen, for example, in those individuals with phacomorphic glaucoma where there's a large lens that's prohibiting flow of the aqueous. It can also be seen after trauma where there may be vitreous obstructing the pupil and allowing uh, the aqueous to flow. Um, Secondary angle closure glaucoma without pupillary block are typically mechanisms like neovascular glaucoma or eye syndromes, uh, which close the angle off by obstruction with the membrane. Plateau iris syndrome is an anatomical configuration where the iris processes are rotated anteriorly. Uh, this results in a typical sinusoidal wave on your gonioscopy that you see with a slip beam when it's placed at an angle. Um, and these patients typically have a very steep uh, an anterior approach to the iris in the periphery. Again, classifying glaucomas based on the initial event, we can have the childhood glaucomas. Primary congenital or infantile glaucoma. Uh, again, this would be the most common uh, category. Uh, you can have glaucoma associated with congenital anomalies. Uh, and again, you can have secondary glaucomas. Secondary glaucomas could be things due to um, pathology like Sturge-Weber syndrome or neurofibromatosis. Okay. Finally, uh, we'll combine or we'll come to the combined mechanism glaucomas. These are typically defined as uh, individuals who have glaucoma uh, or have two or more forms of glaucoma that either occur sequentially or simultaneously. The most common uh, scenario for this that I have seen is typically an individual who comes in with elevated pressures and a narrow angle. They have an iridotomy performed and the angle is then opened, but their pressures still remain high without having obvious uh, PAS formation or chronic angle closure glaucoma. So they typically can't be defined as an angle closure patient because the angle is now open and yet it wouldn't be proper to define them as a primary open angle glaucoma patient either. So they get classified as a combined or mixed mechanism glaucoma. Uh, this can also be used to define those individuals that have uh, IOP elevation due to intrinsic TM obstruction as well as obstruction by synechia. And you can use this as a similar scenario or use an example as a similar scenario given above. Uh, in this type of glaucoma, the, the treatments are basically modified based on the degree of the angle closure that is present, as well as the etiology of the angle closure. So the treatments will vary um, on each patient, even though they are given the same uh, essential diagnostic category. Glaucoma can also be based or classified based on the mechanism of outflow obstruction. I find this to be the most intuitive uh, way for me to think about glaucomas. Uh, open angle glaucomas can be broken down into pre-trabecular trabecular or post-trabecular obstructions. There are uh, uh, classes of glaucoma in each one of these categories as shown uh, in the chart or table very clearly. And you should become familiar with these and be able to give them as differentials for any type of glaucoma on your OCAPs. So for example, if you see an open angle glaucoma, 
and uh, the angle looks normal, you could pick anything under the trabecular cause of the uh, mechanism as part of your differential. Uh, finally, under the closed angle mechanisms, we typically think of this as an anterior pulling or posterior pushing uh, mechanism. And again, the uh, diagnosis uh, diagnoses are given in the table. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to become familiar with this table and be able to list things off of it uh, quite quickly. With regards to the epidemiology of glaucoma, capital POAG, or primary open angle glaucoma, is the most common form of glaucoma. It affects at least 2.25 million people over the age of 45 in the U.S., and between 84 and 116,000 people are blind bilaterally because of this. There is a strong racial disparity in the prevalence of the disease. It is more common in blacks and Hispanics than whites. Uh, it's typically between 1 and 2 percent in whites over the age of 40, and it may be up to six times higher than this in blacks. The prevalence increases with age, and it's up to three to eight times higher in the seventh decade um, of life compared to the 40s. There have been studies out of nursing homes that have showed a prevalence of 10 percent in those uh, aged 70 and older. The risk factors for capital POAG, or primary open angle glaucoma, uh, should be very familiar to you, and you should uh, document them on each of your new patient glaucoma exams if this is your diagnosis. The risk factors are IOP level, age, race, and family history. There are more weakly associated risk factors, including diabetes and myopia. Um, and there may also be uh, other possible linkages uh, as well. Uh, sex and vascular diseases, such as hypertension and atherosclerotic uh, disease, are not definitive risk factors. However, in many large epidemiological studies, there has been a trend towards higher prevalence in males, although it's never met statistical significance. And the relationship of hypertension as well is quite complex. It may actually be somewhat protective early on in glaucoma and possibly more detrimental later in the disease. For primary angle closure glaucoma, uh, risk factors for the disease are similar. Uh, age, race, sex, uh, family history, uh, as well as refraction. Uh, however, much of the categories are different. Uh, uh, for race category, uh, primary angle closure glaucoma is most common among Asians, uh, or more common among Asians than it is among whites or African American uh, individuals, but it's most common in Inuit Eskimos, where the prevalence can be 2 to 4 percent. It's more common in females than males across all races, being 3 to 4 uh, times more common. And the prevalence increases uh, with age. It's most common between the ages of 55 and 65 years of age. It's usually associated with hyperopia. And there may be an increased risk with a positive family history, though the exact degree or uh, extent is uh, unknown. It's also important to understand the uh, risk of positive family history and genetic factors. Uh, there's a higher prevalence of glaucoma among those uh, that have siblings uh, with glaucoma. They're also known to have higher uh, rates of increased cupping as well as a uh, higher prevalence of uh, elevated eye pressure. The prevalence of glaucoma among siblings um, who have glaucoma is approximately 10 percent and the lifetime risk of getting glaucoma by the age of 90 is 10 times higher for individuals with a relative that has glaucoma. The uh, cause is uh, uh, obviously genetic, and there are probably many genes that are involved in the development of glaucoma. That is, it's a polygenetic uh, trait. There are many well-documented uh, linkages or well-known genes that cause glaucoma, and you should be familiar with this table. This table is uh, by no means complete, but you should be familiar with it. Very commonly asked uh, linkages or genes are the PAC6 gene for aniridia, which is on chromosome 11, the tiger or myosillin gene on chromosome 1 for primary open angle glaucoma or juvenile glaucoma, and the CYP1B1 gene, which is on chromosome 2 for congenital glaucomas. I would also be familiar with the genes that cause Regress syndrome, iridogonial dysgenesis, uh, as well as more recently the pseudoexfoliation. 
Thank you.